Hi, Corey from SAS Pegasus here, and today I want to talk about setting up media files for your project on S3. So before I dive into this, just a quick overview of what media files are and why you need them in your Django project. And basically, they are files that are not distributed with your application. So this is anything that is uploaded by a user. So in Pegasus, one example is a profile picture. So if I want to go add a profile picture to my user, it's getting this one from Gravatar, but let's say I want to add this one from OpenAI and I want my profile picture to be an OpenAI logo. So it says success, but if I refresh this page, it didn't work. And it is trying to load a URL here for this media profile picture endpoint that basically does not exist. So this is obviously a problem and it's a common problem with any PaaS platform as a service, which depends on Docker because Docker doesn't really have a good way of exposing the file system to you and these images need to get stored on the file system. So what people do to fix this is they store their media files somewhere else, usually a cloud storage provider like Amazon S3 or DigitalOcean Spaces. And today I'm just gonna walk through an example of setting that all up end to end on S3 so that we can get our media files working in our application here. So this is from the Pegasus docs on how to do this. And where we're gonna start is we're gonna start with this guide from testdriven.io, which is something that I always use to set things up. It's also how what I followed in order to configure Pegasus. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up our S3 bucket. And so I'm logged into S3 here. I'm gonna to go to buckets and then I'm going to go to create buckets. And I will put this bucket into the US East region. I'm going to name it something like uh, my app name, which is translate and then media for my media files. And I'm not gonna copy any settings. I am going to use ACLs, I believe. I'm just gonna double check here. Yes. And then I'm going to turn off block all public access and accept the warnings that come with them. Then I'm going to disable versioning. I will leave all these other settings the same and I will create the bucket. So this is my bucket here now set up. And next we're gonna go through these IAM access steps. And this is where we're going to create a user and a group that can only access our specific S3 bucket so that we don't accidentally sort of leak our root credentials anywhere. So we're going to go to the IAM page and we're going to create a user group Create group, and then we're going to enter, let's see, translates media group, something like that. And we are going to select the built-in policy for AWS S3 full access. Check that. And create the group. So we do have the option of limiting the access even further to just the group that we've created. I will not show that here, but you can do it by essentially following these instructions from this site here. So after we've set up the group, we're going to set up a user for this group. So we're going to go to users, create user, and then we'll say sort of like Translate user. We do not want to provide access to the management console. And then we're going to go to next. We're going to add the user to the group that we just created. We're going to do next. And we are done. So that is what was just shown here. And now we're going to create some access keys for our user so that they can use them to work with the Amazon media from our server. So 
we are going to go to the user we just created. We're going to go to security credentials and we are going to do create access key for local code and click next. For the description, we can say something like uh, translate media server access. And that just gives us a hint as to what we're using it for here. Okay, so now we've got our access key and we've got our secret key. So we've been using Kamal for deployment of our application. And so we'll add these to our Kamal environment. So I'm going to go into my applications deploy folder. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add them to our secrets. And that is in our deploy YAML file. And so we're going to add a variable for AWS access key ID and a variable for AWS secret key ID. And then in our .n file for our deploy, we can add these values down here at the bottom. So our access key ID, we will get from here. And our secret key, we'll get from here. And then for our storage bucket name, we'll choose the name of the bucket we set up, which I believe was translate media. And the custom domain, I think, is also translate media. And since those values aren't secrets, we can actually add them directly to our clear list. So let's do that. Storage bucket name, translate media, and S3 custom domain, translate media. So once we've updated our environment, we're going to push those environment variables to our production application. We're going to do that by looking up the documentation. And let's see. Kamal env push is what I believe we want. And so in our command line here, do Kamal env push. So hopefully what this will do or has done is take our environment variables and sync them up with all of our production Docker containers. Right, so the other thing we may need to make sure to update is to set use S3 media to true. That will tell Django to use our S3 media storage instead of trying to use the file system. So let's do that. And then we'll have to push our environment again. And that just syncs our local environment variables up with our production environment variables. So I'm curious if this just worked. I suspect it didn't, but let's give it a crack. So now let's try again to set our logo to open AI. It again claims success, but if we refresh the page, it fails. So I'm first curious. Yeah, so it is still trying to load this from our Django application server instead of from our S3 bucket, which makes me think that maybe the deploy or the environment variables didn't take. So let's also try running a deploy and see if that gets the job done. It's going to run for a while, so I'll just pause here for a sec and report back when this is finished. All right, so the deploy finished, and now we can try again. And let's grab that open ad logo. It says success. We're going to refresh the page, and it worked. So now if we copy this image link, we can see 
it is now an S3 URL up here, which means our Django app is now serving media files from S3. So I hope that was useful. There is more complicated stuff that you can do with S3 files. In particular, you can make them private so that, you know, instead of uploading, like if users, instead of uploading pictures, like profile pictures, they were uploading sensitive or private pictures or documents that they didn't want to share with other people. You can configure Django and S3 to not make those URLs public on the S3 side. But for now, we have what we need and we are one step closer to having our production app ready to go.